Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. Today we have a pre-production Fuji XA7. A lot of you guys have been asking for us to review something that's under a thousand dollars. We yeah. finally have it and so stay tuned to find out what this pre-production camera is all about. We've already established that this camera is under $1,000. It's actually $899 Canadian with a kit lens with the 15 to 45 millimeter OIS power zoom lens. Yes, the power, power zoom, zoom lens. <laughs> and um, it's actually a pretty decent little kit for, for this price point to get someone into the X-Series lineup. Now the XA series from Fuji have always represented a very good value. And if you want to step up your game from cell phone photography, this camera is really going to help you out. It has a brand new articulating screen from Fuji that promises to be very bright. It's a 16 by 9 ratio, which is similar to what your cell phone is going to be. And we also have a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor and interchangeable lenses. Yeah, and it's a newly implemented sensor and they've made some other changes from the previous XA5 lineup. And some of them have to do with the design of the camera, but the overall interface and usability. And so we'll get into some of those things on why this camera would be a good option and some of the things that it's missing as well. One of the biggest things that you'll notice that this camera doesn't have is any kind of viewfinder. So it doesn't have an electronic viewfinder or an optical viewfinder. You're purely relying on the screen. And so we're hoping that the screen is really bright, really responsive and easy to use because that's all you got. Now I've never been a huge fan of the XA series from Fuji, they do represent a pretty good value but I find they limit the features a little bit too much. The previous generation of this camera, the XA5, had some big faults to it. It wasn't the greatest autofocusing camera and in 4K video you were limited to 15 frames per second. Now we've addressed that, the XA7 now has very similar autofocus performance to the X-T30 and in 4K video we're at 30 frames per second and a full sensor readout which is really nice. The biggest thing for me with this camera though is trying to get people from cell phones into this camera and they've done it by using this rear screen and it is a really nice screen. It's properly articulating screen that fully articulates up and down for high angle shots or low angle shots or of course the all important selfie. It's a 16 by 9 ratio screen, 3.5 inches diagonal. Now this is how we're using this camera primarily because we have no other interface. They want you to use the screen more and more. You do have a small little joystick and a couple little buttons, but for the most part you're going to be using this rear screen. But it's a very similar experience to how you use your cell phone to take pictures. If I want to apply filters, I can swipe back and forth, I can add brightness, darkness, all different features, but I'm using this rear screen primarily. Even under very bright conditions, I was impressed with how good the screen was and it was usable, although I would love to have a viewfinder as an option. Although they have upgraded a lot of features on the XA7, it still shares some of the same features as the XA5. One of them is you're still shooting at six frames per second in continuous, which is fast enough if you're shooting kids or pets moving around, but if you're shooting faster action or sports, you probably wanna look at something that's a little bit faster, like the X-T30 that can shoot 11 frames per second. The other thing is, is that th this uses the same battery and that was rated at 440 shot SEPA if you're in the economy mode. And one thing you have to know about this camera if you're considering it is that there's three different power modes. You can either use economy, which does reduce some of the performance or their standard or high performance mode. And you are gonna chew through battery fairly quickly. The nice thing is though, that this uses a USB-C 2.0 port. And so you're able to charge the camera quickly and you're also able to transfer images, whether that's to your computer or your smartphone as well. The sensor also has more phase detection autofocus points, giving you more precision as well as more coverage. And we love the face and eye detection that they've put in this camera. We've seen it in the X-T30 and the X-T3 and the firmer that Fuji has been able to put into these cameras keeps making it better and better. We did notice a few little hiccups, but again, this is a pre-production model. So we expect that some of those things are gonna resolve themselves because Fuji is just really good at updating that firmware. And I'm really glad to see that they're putting in their best autofocus technology. We're finally seeing manufacturers bring it down into their entry-level camera and I think that's where it's really beneficial. When you have new photographers that are learning about composition and just photography in general, they can have this face detection autofocus. And so if, some, if there's a person that's their subject, it's gonna lock onto that face no matter what. So even if you're in pinpoint autofocus or single point autofocus, 
and you have the face and eye detection turned on, it's going to override all of those autofocus settings and make sure that that face is in focus. The only time that that's sometimes a bit of a disadvantage is if you have multiple people in a scene and you might be trying to focus on something specific. And so there might be some situations where you're going to want to turn that off. I want to start off the video section here by thanking Fuji for finally giving us usable 4K footage. The previous generation only gave us 15 frames a second, which was basically unusable for 4K video. Now this camera, the XA7, features full readout, full sensor, 4K video at 30 frames per second. If we go into 1080, we can go down to 60 frames per second. If you want to connect another video device to this, keep in mind it is a micro HDMI. Now, disappointingly, this camera does not have a headphone jack, and I really appreciate that when I am recording audio. Now, we do have a microphone jack, which is nice, but it's a two and a half millimeter socket. Keep that in mind. It does come with a supplied adapter to make the three and a half millimeter. We do have a hot shoe on top, of course, and that's a great place to mount a microphone or an external recorder. Now we also have a really trick feature. If you're into Instagram, we do have a video countdown timer, which is great. If you want to record pre-select mounts for 15 seconds or 30 seconds, this camera will really help you do that. So considering <laughs> it's already getting super cold here, uh, one nice surprising feature is because this is a more plasticky material, <laughs> it actually isn't as cold in the hand as some of the more metally feeling options. I don't love the material of this camera, um, but when your hands are cold, it's actually kind of <laughs> nice. No, it doesn't give you that real feeling of high quality, that's for sure. No, but there isn't any weather sealing no. and it's extremely light. Like it's one of those cameras where you kind of have to double check if it's actually <laughs> in your bag because you don't feel it at all. No, it's very true, especially with that lens. Yeah. And I think, um, with well, without the lens, it actually weighs less than the predecessor. And as Billy the Fuji guy said, <laughs> it's less than a bottle of water. Oh, So if wow. you can carry a bottle of water. You can carry the you XA7. You the camera. <laughs> they also made some nice stylistic changes on the front of it. I think it's slightly sexier. Yeah, Fuji's always nicer. made really pretty cameras. I mean, you know, low end, high end, right? They all look really nice and classy. Yeah, and when you look on the top, they've changed it up a little bit as well. We now have a dedicated on off button mm -hmm. and we have two different dials and one custom button as well. So yeah. it's default, it's going to be video recording, but then you can change that to a variety of other features as well. Yeah, and don't forget, it does have a built in flash, which is kind of cool. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and I like that it's actually a little bit higher than most pop up flashes to account for different lenses. And of course, on the back panel, it looks very, very different with this whole new interface face there's very little buttons we have an eight-way joystick but the screen is taking up most of the real estate on the back of this camera and so a lot of the interface the menu changes are all gonna be done on the touch screen and I don't know about you but I found this touch screen to be incredibly responsive yeah no it is uh, it works great I have no complaints about the screen itself uh, it does work really well and I like how they've implemented some of the modes if I want to mm -hmm. try a filter out I can swipe the filter from left to right and see if I like the effect of it on the whole thing yeah and it, they've done that quite a good job of that and of course with the film simulations <laughs> you can use the sliders to change into your film simulation so you can see what it's gonna look like a nice little preview sliding from side to side and there's also a portrait enhancement mode it seems to just kind of blur the skin a little bit to make it look softer but I suppose for smartphone users that's kind of a nice feature um, but I'd say as far as some of the interesting little photo features that are built into this the one that I had some fun with was actually the light trail option yeah, you got a pretty cool shot there so it was kind of neat just to see the the process of it and I'd be excited to put a really fast lens on this and go and shoot some star trails or maybe even fireworks something like that but well, we were talking about it earlier actually even doing light painting right and be able to yeah. see real time what the camera's seeing as you're painting rather than like try something out and hope for the best right and then retry it right yeah. you can see it in transition you can see it happening exactly and there's also a bright mode that gives you kind of like this HDR effect um, there's lots of really quirky features which we don't usually get into <laughs> too, too much but if you're someone that likes to really get creative and you want to do that like isolated color with black and white mode you know how we all love little, that right i don't know early 2000s or something you can do it i mean i can totally see where fuji's going they made the interface rear screen so similar to what it like for a cell phone user that the experience is seamless if i want to get into a higher quality photography and i want to get out of my cell phone this will drag me into that quite easily and it's not intimidating at all it's yeah. a very similar experience to what i'm using with my phone Plus, if you're someone that has someone in your family that has X-Series lenses, you can use their full lineup. And I think this is where it has the advantage over, say, the Canon M50. Mm. The M50 does, I think, still have some benefits with the electronic viewfinder and that. But 
the lenses for the M series camera just isn't there. You can't just natively mount a lot of good glass to it. A lot of the glass is really soft. So I think that's where Fuji definitely has the leg up. I know, as soon as I grab a Fuji, one of the first lenses I wanna grab is that 23 F2. I love that lens, right? <laughs> but you know, you're doubling the cost of what you're buying this whole kit for almost. It's true, it's true. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I mean, when we look at Sony, the problem I have with Sony for beginners is that their interface is really difficult to use. It's hard to find a lot of the features that you want to shoot with. And this camera is really designed to, to be a smooth transition from smartphone photography to having a camera. And I think a lot of this does come down to the style because it physically <laughs> looks like a really nice camera. Well, I've always enjoyed and I've always had fun shooting with Fuji, right? They, they make the menu system quite easy. And we know that this camera necess isn't necessarily made for us, but we did shoot with, um, with someone that we know, yes. who you might have seen from our previous <laughs> Canon 90D and M6 Mark II episode. Her name is Bianca. And we thought she might be a good person to check this camera out just purely because of her age. She's 19 <laughs> years old. But as it turns out, you know, she has a pretty strong photography background too. So she was missing things like the electronic viewfinder and having some dedicated dials to do some of her control. Um, so it doesn't, it's not an ageism thing that this camera is designed for younger people. It's really more just kind of what your background is. The Fuji X-A7 is a very interesting camera in the marketplace. I personally am having trouble justifying this camera over top of using a, a modern generation cell phone. Yeah, that's because you don't <laughs> care what you look like. And I mean, this camera is so much more stylish than your cell phone, Dave. It just, is. Just so you know. <laughs> it is stylish. I'm not arguing that. But I have very similar experience with my cell phone. Um, and in the end results, I'm going on Instagram, I'm going on the, you know, Facebook. I don't need the higher resolution. I don't need the interchangeable lenses. I don't need another device to walk around with. I would much rather skip to the X-T30. Fair enough. I mean, if you have an extra $500 <laughs> laying around, I would go with X-T30 too. It has the electronic viewfinder, that higher resolution X-Trans sensor. And overall, I think it is a better experience to use that camera. But moving from a smartphone to a camera like this, I still think it's a nice way to get into the X series lineup. Yeah, so I have a couple questions. One, can I borrow $500? No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanna know what you guys think about this. Is this enough of an upgrade of a camera to get you out of your smartphone, or do you wanna skip on to something bigger and better? Yeah, let us know what you think by commenting below. Follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can catch you again very soon.